This time on Rad Rat Video, we're learning the finger flip. Welcome to Rad Rat Video. Here on this channel, you can learn something new about skateboarding three times a week, from trick histories to game reviews to learning tricks themselves here on the Shred School. Uh, this time we're going to learn the finger flip. I think it's a really good trick to learn because it's important to learn a little bit of everything. So even if you're a hardcore street guy, you should have some tricks on transition. You should be able to axle stall and a few things. And you should learn a little bit of freestyle too. Um, it really helps make you a more well-rounded skater, gives you more options for developing your own style. And the finger flip is a really good trick to learn from freestyle because it has, it's a whole category. So you can do doubles, you can do big spins, you can do, you can like ollie into it and do it. A million different ways to do finger flips. Um, plus it's a really friendly trick to learn. Um, you can build into it without ever, um, like it has a really smooth uh, difficulty curve. And we'll talk about all that uh, coming up. So uh, the way that I'm going to teach it is by grabbing the nose like this. Uh, and this is a pretty important thing. Uh, having your hand like this and flipping it forward, you can think of it like heel flip direction if you want to. And, I, and that is by far the best way to do a, a finger flip because it leaves you more open to different options. You can spin it uh, front side, you can do big spins and stuff that way. People can do triple finger flips uh, this way. Uh, so what some people want to do, they want to grab the board upside down with their hand like that. Um, you can flip it faster, but you're more likely to hurt yourself um, if your weight balance isn't quite right. Um, and it's just not really necessary. Also, what a lot of people will do, if they come from street and they decide to learn the finger flip without ever looking one up, they'll often grab the board like this and flip it this way, kickflip style. And I think people do that just because it's kickflip style. That's like the standard flip. So the default way to think about it is to do it this way. You don't want to do that either because you're more likely to have to throw the board down. Um, this way you can actually pull the board with you in the air and you can get more height out of it. So let's talk about how to work your way into doing a normal rolling finger flip. Uh, the first step, really, really easy. Stand next to the board, tail on the ground, grab the nose and just practice the flip. And uh, there's really nothing simpler than doing that you know there's no risk you just do it until you get really used to how it feels to get the board to flip um, get used to both trying to keep the board straight that's going to be a problem in a little bit um, and just getting the speed right so um, that's really super simple step one no problem uh, the second step is actually standing on the board when it's in in a tail stop stance flipping and landing it so that's actually called a tail hand flip for any trivia experts out there. Uh, it's not technically a finger flip at that point, but um, that's the next step. Also a really easy thing to do, but it's very expandable. You can do it to rail, you can do it into Casper, you can land it in, into truck, you can do all kinds of stuff with it. Um, but that's another good way to just practice the trick. Uh, the third step is kind of a hybrid of the tail hand flip and the finger flip um, and you actually do it by rolling. So let's get into foot position and stuff like that. Uh, I put my front foot generally right about here. Uh, you want to be pretty far back and pretty much off the side. Your front foot's only job is to get out of the way. So, um, you know, however that feels right to you, for me having it right about there is good. Back foot on the tip of the tail. Thing is, you aren't gonna pop the tail on, on this one, but again, it helps to not really be completely centered and taking up the whole tail just because you're more likely to still be in contact as it flips and get in the way. So just having it on the tip is good. Um, and uh, that's what, you, what you're gonna do. So this step for the trick, all you're, you're gonna do, you're gonna get in that foot position, you're gonna roll, gonna grab the nose, and then you're gonna pull up the tail and start to slide on it. So you know, do your tail drag and then finger flip. And that's, this is what that looks like. So this is kind of an in-between step. You're not gonna wanna do this very long, but you're used to having the tail on the ground, doing the finger flip and landing it. So now you're just transitioning from rolling to stopped to flipping. And then you can generally, if you do it quick enough, have enough speed to still um, maintain, a, maintain your speed and roll away. 
So uh, that's a good thing to do. You don't want to stop there, um, but you want to do that for a little while and get used to it. At this point, you can start to clean up some of the other issues, like having the board spin. Uh, this is one of the most difficult things about this trick to me, um, is having it spin you know, this much, just enough where you land and then you have to kick turn. Um, it, it happens a lot. And you can work on the exact positioning of your hand is part of it. If you are too much on this side, um, on this side when you grab, you can flip it and it'll kind of spin around your finger. So you really want to flip it around the center of the board um, and that'll keep it in place. If you grab off of that, the board will kind of flip like this. You know, like it'll kind of get off, off axis when it flips and then you're more likely to land at an angle. Uh, the other thing would be your foot position. The, it might be possible that as the tail touches, you're doing a tiny bit of a scoop not much, but just a little bit, enough to throw it off. Um, so that's something else to keep an eye out for. So work on cleaning that up and getting them straight. Um, and then the final step to learning the trick is to actually do the full thing without tail dragging and stopping at all. So uh, exactly how far you want to take this step is up to you. For me, if the tail touches a tiny bit, I think it's fine because most tricks do anyway. Um, but a lot of really serious freestyle guys will be able to do this trick without the tail even touching the ground at all. Um, and I think that that's, um, you know, it helps you maintain more speed. You're not dragging at all, um, that kind of stuff. It, it looks a little bit more clean, but to me, having it kind of pop a little bit is not really a bad thing. So that's the way I do mine. Helps me get a little bit more height out of it too because if the tail touches for a second, I can, you know, if I'm reaching down as far as I can, I'm already part way through my jump. Um, if you don't want your tail to touch at all, you're gonna be more crouched and you're gonna be flipping it and kinda, you know, just pulling your feet up real quick and not giving yourself a lot of space. So I'm, I'm six foot one, trying to do the whole trick hunched over like that is not really the best way for me. Um, it might work for you, just keep that in mind as an option. So the biggest difference in the way that you are gonna do it without the tail dragging is your weight. Um, so I talked about, you know, even though your foot is on the tail, you're not really popping it. And the thing is, uh, it's gonna feel a little bit weird because your weight is not gonna be where it really should be, you might think. So, you know, you're leaning a little bit forward because your hand's on the nose already, but you, you want your weight to be more in your front foot. Um, that's something that's gonna change as you did that sort of in-between step, your weight's shifting to the tail. You don't want that shift at all. You want your weight to be right over, like maybe slightly back from the middle of the board. Um, and then you, you jump up and flip the board. Um, it can be pretty tough. It's unlike anything else you've done at this point because um, you are jumping off of the board without taking it with you because your hand's doing that. So it's, it's kind of a strange thing. You might take a little bit of getting used to, um, but it's really not that tough. It just takes a little bit of different thinking. So one of the biggest problems you might run into at this point is uh, just being a little bit too heavy on your board and not timing it out right. So you kind of start the flip, but you haven't jumped yet. And you know, you kind of just twist your hand and it doesn't go anywhere. Um, I've hurt myself trying to learn finger flips uh, way back in the day, not doing it right or like starting the flip and then my foot gets in the way and twists it back and it kind of hurts my wrist a little bit. Um, but with a little bit of timing, a little bit of practice, uh, you should be able to get past that without too much trouble. The one thing that really is different, um, especially if you've been skating for a while, you've been doing street for a while, you're used to trying to catch your tricks as high as you can, you're used to really jumping and throwing the board. Uh, with this one, you are going to be a little bit more hunched over, especially when you're first learning. Uh, the, the jump is going to be more, um, you know, you're going to be bend, bent down, you're going to pull your feet up and then land it. But you still have to have your, your arm holding it. So you can't really jump as high as you can go. You have to just get your feet up without your whole body going up. So uh, that is the way that that feels. It's a little bit different, but with a little bit of luck, you should be able to get it without too much trouble, especially with all those steps. Um, it's a pretty friendly way to, to get into the trick. It kind of helps you go step by step through the trick. So that's the finger flip. Um, there's a lot of different variations you can do from here. I may teach some more in the future, depending on if you guys want to see some or not, let me know about that in the comments. 
Um, right now, you're gonna see all of the ones that I filmed from different uh, camera angles. Hopefully that'll help you uh, understand the trick a little bit better as well. Um, after that, you're gonna see some more videos I made recently. These are some more videos from the Shred School um, in different categories. So check those out as well. And don't forget to subscribe by tapping my logo on screen so you can learn more about skateboarding three times a week. Thanks for watching.